hello I am back again it is Tiggy with you okay so today we are making this big block of soap that I have here and this one is called apothecary so this one is an essential oil blend um, mandarin lemongrass nutmeg and something else I can't off the top of my head remember bear with me it was black pepper, that's what I use. So mandarin, lemongrass, black pepper and nutmeg. I just said a bad swear, so we'll have a bloopers video at some point where all my bad swears. So if you're gonna watch my bloopers video when it does arrive, hide your kids. Don't let them watch it. That's just a heads up. Okay, so we're gonna get to making this. So if you wanna see how I made it from start to finish, then stay tuned. My toe, so I'm just going to pour my lye. It's a little cloudy because I've made it up from a master batch I've made. So I do I do a 50-50 ratio and then I add the extra water that I need. So sometimes it's a bit cloudy. I do a master batch it's just so I've got the lye ready and it's always a lot um, cooler so I can just get to soaping rather than having to wait for ages for it to cool down or put it in the sink which I'd rather not do. So I'm just going to stick blend this together. If I turn my stick blender on. Getting some, I just want to add my colloidal oatmeal. to the bottom, into the bottom, I'm going to add my French pink clay and stick blend that in. And into that I'm going to put my soap shreds so they're all here in a bowl I'm just going to put them all in just mix them in into the mould, which is here, let's get that in, Okay. 
smells good. It's got strong lemongrass notes, even though that's not the uh, most potent of the blend. The mandarin is. Okay, now I need to give it about five, ten minutes to set up before I do the next bit. Other bit staying nice and fluid, so that's good. Okay, so I'll be back in a second and we'll texture that and then get the top on. Okay, so just about ready to texture through. I only want to push it around a bit just so we get a crooked line when I put my cocoa powder on there. It could do with being a bit thicker than it is, but it's not too bad. It's just, I've got a customer turning up in a minute to pick up an order. So I didn't want to wait too long because I want to film. <laughs> a bit of a predicament, but I don't want to be interrupted while I'm filming. So that's why. I'm doing it this way. Okay, so there's some rivets and divots in there. So cocoa powder line then, I'm just going to use my spoon. And just dust this over. This is how I make the black honey soap, I make this sort of um, design as well. Actually, I've got to make that soon because I haven't made it for ages and it's on my list of soaps that need to be made. a second and pour my essential oils into my bowl of the other half of the soap which is sitting thickening up over there just gently stir those in giving that like a slight pale peachy colour. Notice I've not got a pinny on today. I was trying to be uh, extra careful. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do. I always end up with something down my top. Always. Okay. So, bring them all back across. So by right, because that's so thick, 
we should be able to just pour this over. I believe that's gone hot now. Careful not to break that line underneath. These papas might be slightly heavier than usual because of all the soap scraps in there. And just to finish, I'm just going to retexture the top all over. I was going to use botanicals, but I think it's overkill because there's so much sort of happening inside. I don't really want to do anything else to it. What I do want to do is push that back a bit on the side. Otherwise, you end up with a sloping side, and I don't want that. I want the... Otherwise, you, like some bars, I mean, they'll come out at a lighter weight if you um, just push that. You know what I mean. If it's like if you bring in the sides, then that side of that soap, when it's going to get cut there, will be sloping and you'll get lighter than the ones in the centre. That's what I'm trying to say. Just lift it up a little more. I don't want it to be too spiky, otherwise, like I've mentioned in previous videos, it hurts your skin. just go over it one more time since it feels like such a nice texture underneath and just give it a little more interest than just once over and yeah I finished it before my customer turned up <laughs> okay I'll be back tomorrow to cut this one and I will see you then okay so I'm going to get it out of the mould so I have my little clip before anyone asks where the mould is from, I made it. It's an old one that I made years ago. 
and the measurements are 36 centimetres by 36 centimetres and it has clips clips and hinges on it it's a long time since I've made this mould a long long time I made three of them so I've got another two that I've got in the window that uh, they hold my soaps for my display so I need to get them back out actually and start using them all again and so there'll be some days where I don't just make one batch of soap I'll make you know two or three so I need to uh, change my soap display boxes in the window to something else that I've got out the back that I don't use okay so still smells very lemongrassy it's really nice Definitely smells like when you walk into an old apothecary or a, somewhere that, like a Neil's Yard then, if you know a Neil's Yard scent, when you walk into there, it's got all the botanicals and all the smells and it's lovely. It smells like that. Again, I'm going to peel off the bottom. I use a silicone mat so it's nice and smooth on the base. It's got like a sheen to it. Otherwise, the paper leaves that sort of a effect on the bottom as well. And I take all this off, so I don't want... Um, my edges to have those lines on, so I always uh, just plane off those when I cut or after I've cut, I sort of plane them all off. Okay, so let's cut this big old block. Colour. I was afraid that the colour was going a bit too babysick like but it's actually not too bad now it's sort of um, lightened up a bit so that's good. Make sure that wire stays tight enough but not too tight so it snaps. I've got quite a thick wire on there. Starting to get some little shapes and pieces in there. Key. Oh wow. Some little curly ones in that side look. Huh. Awesome. And then just cut the end strip. Okay. So, Netflix. Let's talk about Netflix. I have just started to watch The Queen's Gambit. And, oh Lord, I was not expecting to enjoy it like this. I sort of kept putting off watching it because I wasn't really sure... If I was going to enjoy it or not, so I just I sort of bypassed it over and over again. But actually, I've just uh, I've been watching it the last couple of days, and I'm sucked in. I'm sucked into it already. I think it's really, really good. I just love the way that it's been styled with all of the 1950s um, like clothing, and the the cinematography is really beautiful and some of the buildings they go into and when she goes to do some shopping to get herself some new clothes it's got this oh it's just absolutely lovely <laughs> absolutely lovely so yeah i really enjoyed it i just uh, called my dad earlier and said you have to watch this so if you've been watching the queen's gambit let me know but yeah i'm really really enjoying it a lot 
Okay, doke. Right, we're going to couple of a uh, cut a couple of these. Told you I went with it. <laughs> cut a couple of these and see what it's like inside. just as I assumed it was going to look, which is quite nice. It's quite nice for using up scraps and things like that. It's, um, yeah, it looks kind of snazzy. And creamy. And sort of very natural look to it, I guess. Which is what we were going for, anyway. Apart from all the little soap shreds, they're not all natural colourants, but the uh, base colours are. And of course those essential oils are, which is lovely. So yeah, Queen's Gambit. I've been getting really into it. I think the first part of it actually is what sucked me in completely. It was really, really, really well acted. I'm loving the mother in it. I think she's really good. Definitely playing the part. It's also is strange because I'm reading this Dolores Cannon book at the moment called Five Lives Remembered. And um, the first regression she's done in the book is a lady who lived in the 20s and 30s in Chicago. So it's kind of got the similar sort of, uh, obviously not the 50s, but it's kind of got this similar vibe. And, um, yeah, so watching The Queen's Gambit and reading this uh, book has given me the feels. <laughs> if you've read any Dolores Cannon books, leave me a comment below. I'm not sure how many of you are aware of Dolores, but it'd be interesting to know if any of you have read her stuff and what you think. So let me know. I'm, I, I'm just always so intrigued by that kind of a world, you know. It's uh, People get her confused with thinking that she's a medium or something like that, and she's not. She was just a hypnotherapist who ended up doing quantum healing hypnotherapy. And I just, it's, I'm just fascinated. So the first book she didn't release until 2009, I don't think it was. She wrote it years ago and no publisher would publish it and it just, they said it was just before its time. So it didn't come out for years. And then she decided with her daughter that they should release it. And so I've gone back because it's the very first book she wrote. So I'm going to read all of her books from the beginning. I've read Between Death and Life and that one I loved, but I'm gonna go right back to the beginning and read like this Five Lives Remembered and then the next one after that is Jesus and the Essenes and there's just um, yeah lots and lots and lots of books. My sister bought me the Convoluted Universe books but they're um, sort of way down the line so I've, I want to sort of read them all in chronological order. <laughs> so let me know if you're a Dolores fan. Right that's that. I'm going to continue cutting these other two loaves and get these soaps trimmed up and ready to go into the curing room out the back and I will see you for the next one. Ta-ta!